What's up guys, AC's working on the Skyline, so it's gonna be a good day. We're going to get an alignment at Phillips. Only place I'll trust to do alignments on low cars. Hopefully get this thing dialed in so we can go test it later this week. Still driving hoodless and trunkless. It takes a little bit longer, but what we were able to do is actually go up in the trunk and stand in it so we could get the traction arm adjustment right. And what that allows you to do is get a good tow curve. So when it compresses, you want it to be able to either tow in or tow out the least amount so you have grip and drift. And we were able to get it by lengthening the traction arm a little bit to where it only tows out about a sixteenth of an inch, which according to Njuku is about what they were able to do with these knuckles. If you have it tow out too much under compression, the car just won't grip and won't really drift fast. First time ever having four people in the skyline. Just go for a little test cruise. Look at this guy's lowered car. Hey! Race me! Made a quick pit stop at Mr. Bikes and Boards, the best bike shop in Central Florida, and got myself some replacement front profile hub bolts so I can ride the next time that I want to ride. I'm trying to get up to Connecticut and it's gonna be cooler so I'll be able to ride more. Third gear pull definitely just popped a coupler, but the cool thing is since this car is in math, it's not running like crap, it's just really, really slow. I can literally hear the boost leak. All right, let's see, where is the, oh, there it is. That's where all my boost was going. Nicole, on a scale of one to 10, how bad is my coffee breath? <laughs> it's garlic from your lunch, dude. <laughs> Disgusting. What can I say? Conveniently enough, today's video is sponsored by Dazzle Pro. If you've never gotten a chance to use one of these, 40,000 brush strokes per minute compared to about 300 if you're just brushing by hand. It feels like you would after you go to the dentist and they clean your teeth with one of those fancy, I don't even know what those tools are. So you get that feeling right at home. It's got four brushing modes and a timer. The coolest thing about it though is that it actually has a charging base with a built-in UV sanitizer. Nicole and I have used other electric toothbrushes in the past, but none of them have had a charging base like this. The Elman Sonic Toothbrush by Dazzle Pro is actually very affordable. And I got you guys a 45% off discount. All you gotta do is go to the link in the description. I'd like to give a massive thank you to Dazzle Pro for sponsoring this video. Definitely a very cool, nice product. And Nicole, we need your final approval. How's the breath? Oh, wow. Like, actually, I, I thought that was gonna still be bad because garlic kind of lingers. <laughs> Now that we've got the seat in place, we can start mocking up the handbrake setup. I wanted to make sure that there would be room for the actual handbrake to be mounted, and I do think there will be. I'm also gonna see if I can come up with a fix for this annoying rattling that drives us nuts. So all the noise that you guys heard rattling in that last video actually all comes from this little spherical bearing in here. And I did talk to the company that makes this, and they said that I could just pack it with grease and that should help dampen out the noise and help make the shifts feel a little bit nicer and less rattly. This is the plate for the villain's handbrake without the bottom transmission bracket welded on since they don't make it for a right-hand drive car. But unfortunately, we have the shifter in the way, so we're gonna have to cut out a portion of this so it's not gonna be as strong as it could be. As cool as the Z32 transmission is in retrospect, I do really wish that I had an RB25 trans. However, they're just really hard to find, so I guess it's cool that I saved money doing this, but if I had the chance again and I had an RB25 transmission in front of me, I would much prefer to do that. Maybe one will pop up and I can switch that in the future if I ever pull this one out, but it works. Typically what I'd like to do is just push this in rather than cutting, but it does appear as if I am gonna have to cut a little bit because this should sit lower than where this bracket lays. I hate cutting up interior pieces, so I always try to be very minimalistic. I think that I can get away with leaving this part intact and just trimming down in this area so I can get that nose in a little bit more. Somehow I was actually miraculously able to get it in there without cutting the trim at all. The only sacrifice of it is that I have this little gap here, and I think I'd rather have this little gap than have to cut up this and have it look all gross, so that's very exciting. I do, however, need access for this bolt and I think I'm gonna be sneaky and actually drill a hole through here so that I can put the nut on the other side of the plastic. I'm gonna wait until I get the handbrake set up to decide on the next part, but then I'm gonna have the option to either have it start like this, slightly angled back, or I could cut this and just have it be like a shorter style pull handbrake. This part of the handbrake is gonna rub around this area, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be bad enough to prevent it from actually actuating. So I think I'm actually gonna try everything first without that reinforcement plate that bolts it to the trans tunnel. I don't know if the trans tunnel on this car is stiffer than an S13. It's possible. Uh, it doesn't really feel much stiffer, but um, we'll see how much it flexes. If it doesn't flex a lot, I might just leave it like this since this is really, really simple and almost done.
I knew black paint would chip, so I chose to go with a nice wrinkle black finish. And uh, it should be more durable, and it'll look pretty like OEM, just kind of tucked away in there. So, gonna let this dry, and then I can pop her back in. I'm gonna let the bracket dry overnight before I go put it back in. I haven't downloaded what I need yet to properly demonstrate it, but I kind of came up with a cool little solution to mount a tablet here for for displaying my gauges. I actually took a little piece of glass and double-sided taped it to the bottom of the radio so I could use a suction cup Android mount in the double din area and still be able to angle it towards myself. Down the road, I might want to actually make a mount that were that allows the Android unit to be tucked back there, but for about 10 minutes, this is a very, very cool mount that I'm actually pretty stoked on how it came out. I just need to order an anti-glare like screen protector because I'm assuming glare will be a problem at the track. Also realized I never showed you guys my after alignment spec, so in case any of you are curious, Here they are. You'll, I guess you'll just have to like pause the frame if you want to look at anything because I'm not going to make this clip long enough for you to read everything. Or should I? Should I? Nah, I guess I won't. We're going to actually call it an earlier night tonight, guys. I have to get up very early, so does Nicole. And uh, I don't want to get involved in anything else because I know how that goes. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Skyline feels great on the road. Probably should have filmed some more clips driving today, but to be honest, I was just enjoying the car. Still to get on the track, maybe later this week. We shall see. Like